Hi, everyone. I'm just coming out with this quick video to clarify some things that I heard that were misspoken recently by people that really don't understand how the uh, try to wheel solution works, and they were never part of that solution. So I want to clear those things up right now. Briefly, I want to just mention some things that I had said many times in the past. The medicine wheel first became an historical location somewhere in the early 1970s. And back during that time, the protected area, it was something like this circle here, which is roughly, um, the area of that circle is roughly 175 acres. And pretty much they only stopped stuff from happening up here. What happened after that is in around 1988, around the same time Forrest got cancer, the lumber industry and stuff wanted to start harvesting more lumber and plants all around here. And that was in the video that I recently showed you where Francis Brown was talking in 1990 that they had just recently formed the coalition. The coalition was formed by the uh, Association of American Indian Affairs. They helped. Francis Brown and a couple of other key people form the Wheel Alliance and also the Coalition for the Wheel. And the reason why they formed that is because in 1980, 1988, Forest Service began getting some contracts or selling out contracts for the harvesting of lumber to lumber companies. And then they also had plans to build observation deck up here, put a parking lot up here, and so on. So the Indians, like Francis Brown said, fought that. And their fight really began in 1988. Now, what they wanted was a bunch of things. They wanted the parking lot moved. They wanted um, the ranger station there all the time. And then they wanted more information centers to educate people about what the wheel is used for. And then the other thing they wanted was to extend that boundary to where I have my purple circle here, which is roughly two and a half miles. And you'll see that that cuts over right where I, I thought that the chest is down here, but it cuts right over that, okay? So over the years, they fought in court, and in 1996, they beat the lumber industry, and they, I don't remember by exactly how much, but they expanded it, but they really didn't um, do everything that the Indians asked for. And the lumber companies filed an appeal with the government saying that it was a violation of their rights to harvest lumber when this site is not really a sacred site. So they, of course, they went back into court and around 2004, they won the appeal and, and it was over. I mean, they, they beat the lumber company and they won. And that was when the bench went in, the parking lot was moved, the area was expanded, everything was good except the Indians still wanted the protected area expanded more, right? So, but the, but the major deal was done. The appeal was lost and the Indians had control. Now, remember, this is not Indian land. It was, it was managed by the Forest Service. And you got to remember that the BLM group in, in the United States government, of course, there's a lot of bureaucracy. So they, they split these groups up into different names and different names will be responsible for different areas. But this is, you know, American property, all of it, including the wheel. It's just that they set it aside as an historical site to help preserve it. And then they put in all the information to educate people about it. They, they expanded the area slightly. I don't remember how much. It's in one of my older videos. But they expanded it slightly, and they pretty much did everything. Well, in 2011, and I indicate this in my prior video, they expanded it again. And this time they expanded it to 4,000 acres. And they also rededicated it. And there's a plaque here. Huli noticed uh, the plaque. She uh, took a picture of it. And it shows, uh, you know, the rededication that they re-expanded the area. And then they also gave it its own group. And, it, cause, and the reason why they did that is because they want this other group to kind of work with the Indians in the future on, on discoveries so that they do things better next time around. They, they improved it, right? So this red circle here is 4,000 acres. Now, if you could look, <clears throat> the 4,000 acres is pretty close to where we think the treasure was here, or Sam thinks it was here. I think it was either here or down here where I initially thought, right? Either way, 
it's somewhere between here and here, okay? Um, but but anyway, it's kind of you know close to the line. And like I said a couple of videos ago, that might have been the reason why Forrest was concerned in 2011. But ultimately, it really does didn't impact anything because <clears throat> the land itself itself still is under the same regulations that it was before. They just expanded the area. It's essentially the same as it would be, and it's 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 less restrictive than a national park would be. National park obviously has more restrictions because they have more people going there, so they have more to worry about. So anyway, that's that's the first thing. Now, the second thing I want to say here is I, I read, and this pretty much annoyed me, that somebody had said, well, Sam just got it from somebody else. You know, it's not really his. And that is blatantly false. That is incorrect. It's, it's being said by people that don't have any idea about what really happened. The only people that know what happened with Try to Wheel in detail, to, well, besides Forrest Fenn, would be Sam Smith and myself. There is nobody else in this community that knows all the details. So essentially, if you want to learn anything about Try to Wheel or the wheel, as, it, as Sam indicated it, then you're in the right place here. I'm not getting third-party information. I'm not guessing. I'm getting it straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Now, what happened was, and I said this in my previous video, somebody created an account when Chase Chat first opened in 2013, and their name, their screen name or alias was El Jefe. And they posted in there that they were searching in Wyoming and they were looking for a partner. The only person that responded to them was Sam Smith. And Sam Smith told them, they talked very briefly, and they both realized, you know, oh, hey, we're from Tennessee. And that guy actually gave Sam a name. And I won't tell anybody what that name is, but we believe it was a fake name. And we don't, we don't really believe that El Jefe was really that person that he named. The way he did it was kind of the same way Sam introduced me to this back in 2015. And he did it like this. What El Jefe told uh, Sam, now remember, they were partners, so they were sharing information. Sam didn't go out on the internet, and, and or he didn't get any, you know, uh, hear it from a third party or a fourth party. He got it directly from El Jefe. They were partners. They made an agreement to do a 75-25 split. But what El Jefe told Sam was that the poem will reveal a hidden message if you do what it tells you beginning where it says begin. And he told them what the keyword was. He said, the first stanza gives you the keyword. It's right there and it's bold. And then he said, what you got to do is do exactly what the poem says and spell it out from the T beginning, beginning where one waters halt downward in the poem, doing exactly what the poem tells you. Now, th he didn't even tell him about the home of Brown at that time. He just gave Sam that enough information because he wanted Sam to figure it out for himself. So Sam, a home, and obviously what he did was he he ended up screwing around and moving lines. He had like not far. He took an R from here, and then he took you know uh, an E from here. He showed he he sent that back, and he goes, "I'm not I'm not sure what you're seeing about the secret message." And El Jefe went back to him and again. He goes, "No, you're smarter than that." He goes, "Read what the poem is saying, and do exactly what it's saying." Now, when you when you if you read it, it says begin it where one is halt. Okay, so we're right here. And then the next line, you're looking for an R, it says take it in the canyon down. Well, we're not in the canyon yet. Okay. So you you, you gotta keep reading until you're in the canyon. So the very next line, you still need an R, but we're still not in the canyon. Because he's still telling you that the distance that you have to go before you could put in is not far but too far to walk. And then he said, you go down to the next line. Now, that's the home of Brown, he said. And the way he worded it is, you don't move the home of Brown. You don't change anything above it. Everything happens below the home of Brown. And then that's pretty much all he told him. And then, of course, Sam went back, and eventually Sam figured out which words. It's not that hard. Like I told you, it says, from there. He's, you know, so he's telling you, it's no place for the meek. Well, no place for the meek is the end. Picking the E in the end, right? So all that stuff is straightforward, but they only went right to here. If you've been wise and found the blaze, look quickly down your quest to cease, and they stopped. And Sam went back to El Jefe, 
And he had the, the message revealed, try the wheel end, try the wheel end. He, Sam didn't realize that the blaze was there, that the end formed a double cross. But he just seen the message in there. And, and El Jefe was saying, exactly. And that's where you begin. That's where you begin, where Warm Waters Hall is going to be at the wheel. He said the wheel itself is not where Warm Waters Hall, but you try the wheel. In other words, read the poem when you're at the wheel. And and you'll quickly discover where one wonders all. That's where that's all that he told them. He didn't go anywhere beyond this point in the poem, and he also did not tell them how he arrived at these choices, other than just read the poem. So he, in other words, he didn't explain exactly how it worked, and that's what Sam was left trying to figure out. And then two days later, El Jefe just disappeared. Now, now, Sam was looking for him for a while. He was trying to email him and, and, and contact him on the board, but the guy just stopped responding. He left. I, we don't know what happened to him, and we really can't prove who he was. But to this day, Sam has always said if he found that person, he would give him, if, if we would have found the chest, which, of course, is a moot point now because we didn't. But if he did, he was going to give LFA part, his, part of his, sh- his share. But we don't know. That's the reason why I'm not giving out the exact name that El Jefe gave, because only people that know it is me and Sam, nobody else. And I'm Sam's partner. So if anybody tells you they know what the name is, we're purposely holding that back because I know what's going to happen. And in order for, you know, somebody's going to say, well, I'm, you know, I'm uh, El Jefe. And I'm going to say, okay, what was the name he used? And where did he live specifically? And of course, they're not going to be able to answer the question. So we could we could set that aside. We know that they're of course lying. So anyway, that that takes care of that one. No, Sam did not copy it anywhere. Sam didn't get it from somebody else's email or a third party or harvesting it from the internet. He literally had a partner, and they were teamed up, and the partner shared that much. But he only shared part of it. The stuff that I showed you in my recent videos, I showed you two solves. One of them was Sam solved, and the other one was my solve. And all of that information was never known to the public. As I said, in 2015, I was partnered up with Sam, all right? And Sam, Sam, the last time he was boots on the ground, or the first time was 2014 when he went to the wheel, and he was looking over by Porcupine Creek and all of that. So Sam and I started talking, and I discovered, well, you know, there is a two arm blaze in here. I started to come and I told Sam, I said, I believe that there's more to it than just the word treasure. But Sam and I kind of went our separate ways because Sam didn't agree with that. He said, no, I, I don't think he would have went any farther than this. And I, and I didn't agree with him. So in 2016, you can see the date here. This is February 26th. 2017, I explained how it works. But I, as I give credit here to Sam, I explained that it's different than Sam's. The stuff that I'm showing here is not the same in this video. It's it's slightly different because I was extending it farther than Sam did. So before Jenny deleted these posts, I went and recorded it. Now, during the same time that that occurred, I want you to remember that this is 2016-17. It was happening on Dow's and then eventually Jenny's forum. So Sam was becoming more vocal. I was becoming vocal and putting it out there. And then I talked, and you can find that message in this video. After I posted all of this, Cal Lazarus did one of his vlogs. And I mentioned to, to uh, Cal Lazarus, I said, why don't you look at my screenshots here and do do another vlog that actually goes over this and and cal lazars did that that he did a second video in 2018 where he explained this stuff right he didn't exactly explain it correctly but in his defense he didn't know we purposely did things that we did not show because we're we're not going to give the whole kit and caboodle out i mean you know you you do stuff like that you got to keep some stuff but on the other hand, we also I also wanted to build a team, me personally. And and I did. If it wasn't for all this stuff, I would have never got my Wyoming partner. So it, it did work. You know, 
And then, of course, eventually in um, late 2019 or early 2020, Sam and I got back together and, and we teamed up again. And Sam had this solution. And this is the one in the other video. This is the one I sent to Forrest Fenn. This solution is wrong. But Sam solved went here. And it was still the same thing. It was using the end as ever drawing nigh, the END. But when Forrest said look quickly down, he thought it was look along this blue line. In other words, look down, downhill, all right? And he was in this area. And I started talking to Sam, and I said, well, because Sam told me, he goes, try to come up with alternate spaces up here that we can send our partner to in Wyoming. So the first thing I did was I looked and I said, well, what if it's the end of the day and you're walking into the sun? So you would stand here and look across the center. That's the solstice sunset. So I said, what if it, what if it goes down here? So I marked this spot, this spot, this spot. And, that, and basically my partner was looking around in this area along this bearing he actually had a compass you know we kind of we kind of planned it out right so we planned out these spots this spot figured this spot what the heck and then i said well this might seem funny and it might seem obvious but what if he wants you to turn to turn your back and walk this way in other words where the e and d meet and then where these two meet and where the sunset meets forming an arrow right by this tree. So I added that spot. We were also, this is what I sent Forrest back in May of 2020, along with details, including details about the entire poem breakdown that I showed you, where you find the blaze that's boots on the ground is a, a mountain man eye of wisdom. All of that stuff I broke down. The only thing I had wrong here is that when, when I mentioned five springs in there, I should have known then that you're not doing it like this. What you're doing is you're going down the sunrise, opposite the sunrise this way, and then warm water salt is this way, okay? Because there's no paddle up your creek. This is the dog star. Just heavy loads of water high. This is water high. This is Fawmot. This is the, the fish in the sky. This whole area is water themed. So if you draw the line out from there, it takes you right to the basin, which is where warm waters halt. And this one takes you down to where the treasure, where the sun is going, and you follow it. So it all seems straightforward, but that little discovery there, we did not know until two days after the chest was announced found. So, so that's the real reason why Sam was up here. We figured these places were easier, and, and the snow is not going to impact anything. You could probably even get up here in May, although down here there's a big, huge snow drift that you have to walk across. And my partner actually did that. So we went up there and we ruled all these spots out. So we knew we were wrong, and that's why I went back and started looking at alternatives, and Five Springs was next in line. Unfortunately, it was obviously too late. And after I seen that, I'm like, my God, Sam. Why did we completely overlook that? This is the most obvious one, and we're playing around up in here. Now, the other thing El Jefe told Sam was that he was looking in Fort Smith, which is in Montana. So he followed, he, he basically went to the wheel, and his canyon was the Bighorn Canyon. And his heavy loads of water high was the reservoir. And he basically took the... The uh, Bighorn Reservoir up to the, the Bighorn Canyon, no place for the meek was uh, Devil's Playground. And then he went up to the dam by Fort Smith. And that was where El Jefe left. So El Jefe didn't mention anything about, you know, how it worked and, and that you're supposed to use the radials off of here. That was stuff that Sam figured out. But I looked at it, and, and for some reason, I, I don't know why, but Sam wasn't really paying attention to the meaning behind the cairns in the sky. And I did. So again, even in 2020, and I told Forrest this, I said, look, and I showed him this picture here. I said, this is where Sam wants to go. And I said, I believe Sam, and everything he's pointing says it could be here. But I want to find alternatives so I don't send my partner out there to just go to one spot and leave. And I said, I believe that Sam is wrong and that 
the poem does go on, and there's a way for us to find out the boots on the ground blaze. I don't believe that we're supposed to be left guessing it. So eventually, I found that out, and I told Forrest that in May. And I said, yeah, this is how you find it. You take chest and go in peace. And that's how you end up finding out what the blaze is. So I said, after we're done at this area, we're going to hit up Five Springs and also Clearwater Creek. But I said, we'll get this one out of the way first, because I really didn't have the Five Springs one finished yet. Those lines I just showed you. I hadn't. For some reason, we were looking at the sunset and looking at everything other than what, we, what was obvious. This is an application that I made back in uh, 2016 when I was with Sam, because I, um, all it really does is allow you to shuffle the lines. Uh, and then it also allows you to save what, what, what you have. And it already had the treasure column highlighted. All right. So I can, I can click on here and like move lines relatively quick. It basically rotated them. Okay. I didn't do it. Where it was sliding them to the right. But I rotated it on the left. So that just that just made you know things easier for me to do to try different things. So I believed salmon, but I believed that it went farther than look quickly down. I just I'm like, it just didn't make sense to me that it would end there. And he's telling you to try to wheel, but there's no way for us to know what the blaze would be. Boots on the ground blaze. So yeah, anyway, just to just to uh, sum it up, a couple of other things that I noticed that some people are saying that they have alternate solves they didn't use try to wheel and that's definitely possible i mean you know people who do that you know maybe the lord himself came out and said hey go to the wheel it's where warm water salt you're entitled to that but right now we're, we're not really concerned about how you manage to uh find the ending location or stumble on the chest like jack did we're more interested in the solution which jack is not coming out with <clears throat> so anybody's welcome to come up with alternatives, of course, right? But remember one thing. There's only one way to solve the poem. I don't know if it's my way or if it's Suzanne Stanner's way or Sam's way or anybody's way. Who knows? Only Forrest would have known. But there's only one way. So let's say that somehow Jack comes out, he gives out the solve or Let's say Jack admits that, let's say, Suzanne Stanner's, her solve is right. Well, that means that Suzanne Stanner's solve is the only way that you would have solved the poem. There's not more than one way. There's one way. Now, Suzanne Stanner's was one of the, the few who, you know, she claims right in her solve. She goes, I found out the try to wheel stuff from Sam Smith, but... Just like I did, she didn't believe that it ended here with C. She thought that you go on. She actually discovered that it equals a chest, just like I did. The only difference, if you look at her sob, is for some reason, and I don't know why, she undid everything that was up here and slid all these lines way back. And she ended up coming up with additional words, like chest is in the hole or something like that. She didn't discover the word I. And also her stuff wasn't lined up on Blaze. So her and I came up with different things. But but if you're saying that it wasn't based on try to wheel, I can't say that. My solve is based on try to wheel. Suzanne's solve is based on try to wheel. Bob from the Department of Defense solve is based on try to wheel. Pretty much everybody that had a wheel solution was based on that. But what they did is they solved it the ending differently than Sam did or than I did. And that's cool. Everybody has their alternatives. We don't know which one is right. But that's one of the reasons why I'm putting this out there. And I'm hoping that other people would put their sobs out there and show. And, and again, I'm only interested in stuff at the wheel. I, I don't care about any other sob because I don't believe it's correct. I believe it was at the wheel. So if you have a wheel sob and you did an alternative to what Sam or to what I did, by all means, you know, tell us what it is. Show us. Because if I found something or I missed something, I want to know it. I mean, I'd like to see it, you know, and that's cool. Then you, you know, you solved the poem to the end, you know, or Suzanne solved it to the end, or Bob solved it to the end, or maybe Jack's ending was right. Although I find Jack hard to believe because you don't need 25 days of boots on the ground. And I believe he's lying about the blaze being damaged because I don't believe he knew what the boots on the ground blaze was. So he didn't know where to look. I don't believe he knew the solution at all. 
because everything I'm showing you here and the way I went into, uh, you know, real good detail about how you know what to choose and and just how it breaks down and the blaze and you know, there's there's no way that anybody did that, especially Jack. Then why wouldn't he just come out with it? Because he clearly seemed to try the wheel stuff. You know, again, if your solve does not use try the wheel at all, that's cool. Put your solve out there. Show something. You know, talk is cheap. If you're going to sit there and say, I, I did this, but um, didn't use try the wheel. I just magically ended up at the wheel. Or maybe you ended up at the wheel because of something else you read. But, but just remember one thing. The poem is all that's required. So, so you're obligated to back up what you say by showing how you use the poem to find out that not only you go to the wheel, but exactly where the chest is. By all means, show it to us. There's no point in keeping it to yourself. The chase is over. There isn't another chest out there. So anyway, in 2019, Forrest knew that Suzanne Standers was going here, and he knew her sob. He knew Bob was going here. He knew Bob sob. He knew that Sam Smith was going here. He knew Sam sob. And then he knew that eventually Sam and I teamed up, and we were both going here. And he knew my sob. He knew everything that I'm showing you here, all of it. I explained every single thing here. The only thing that I told him was that, the, that I didn't have five spring spins yet. And, and I had those, obviously, the arrow that I showed you earlier, it was wrong. I didn't have the right, the right carnage chosen. That didn't happen until two days after it was found. So Jack right, rightfully found it. It doesn't matter what he's seen. He's entitled to the chest all day long. Sam ain't entitled to it. I ain't entitled to it. You ain't entitled to it. Nobody is. But Jack, like I said, there's only one solution to the poem. This is not an idea. This is a process. So Jack has to show us how he solved the process. Now, remember, a process can only be solved one way. So no matter what he does, the chances are extremely high that his process is going to match somebody that solved it before he did. Now, that still doesn't mean that we're entitled to the chest. But what it does mean is Jack is not allowed to claim that he solved it before somebody else. It, it just seems obvious to me that the wheel was so popular in 2018. We had, we had the stuff that I posted in that video on Dow's, and, they, and that was before Cal Lazars came out with any videos about the wheel. Then Cal Lazars came out with one video, and then I emailed him, or I, not, I didn't email him, I posted on Jenny's. I'm like, why don't you look at my stuff Come and come out with another one? Eventually he did in 2018. And then we have Shannon's video. She came out in 2018. And I know from the Facebook groups that I was in, including mine, that, that thousands of people were, were in those groups that seen us discussing the wheel stuff. So that's what started to get a bigger crowd. There was more searches and there was more people going there. So it may not be me, but one of those people correctly solved the ending. I believe it was me, of course, just like who would believe it was you. But just remember that there's only one way to do it. Saying that you found an alternative is just lame and wrong. That's like taking an electric razor and plugging it into a wall outlet and saying you discovered alternating current. No, no, you, there's only one way that it works. You didn't discover it. Right. You went to the source, just like Jack did. He went to the source. He didn't know how the poem worked. So but anyway, by all means, I hope you guys start coming out with wheel solves. I'm not interested in solves anywhere other than the wheel, because I believe that it can't be anywhere other than the wheel. Just nothing for me works. That doesn't mean I'm right, but this is my channel, and that's what I'm going with. So I won't bother with any other solves. But you're welcome to. And if you do do a video that explains your sob and you, and you want to post it, but by all means, do it, post it, send, put a link to it on one of these videos and I'll go and watch your video and hopefully you solved it. I, I don't care who solved it at this point. We're not going to get the test. It doesn't matter. Have a good day. Peace.